No, this is actually the second time that the tree has come down here at Hilltop Park. And now police say one man is dead and 60 year old Ricky Smith is behind bars facing murder charges. Yeah, his mom wouldn't tell me exactly why he was arrested, but she said it was a minor offense and one he would have not been arrested for here in America. Yes, they have the pier closed today and it has been all day long since yesterday evening. And Moreno told me that one of his neighbors said he actually saw them loading up the Mustang and putting it on a flatbed tow truck. Uh, as you can imagine, this is something that the Zenobia Dobson has been waiting to hear for two years. The guilty verdict on all charges. Black Friday is today and a lot of people are out shopping, but a lot of the local businesses, especially here in Market Square, are gearing up for their Shop Small Saturday. Fulton High School surprised the Lonsdale family by honoring 15-year-old Xavion Dobson during senior night. It's actually pronounced rogue. Uh, add that one to my list. <laughs> Autonomous <though>. Rouge, <laughs> also known as Autonomous Rogues. <laughs> A Parkway spokesperson says traditionally the third week in October is the best time to see the wonderful and awesome fall colors. We thought that today might be a little shorter, but of course, like the rest of the trial, it has gone to the very last minute. I know, and we've had right. a lot yeah. of instances here in Knoxville recently. One person pulled a gun out and shot at somebody yeah. else. Oh yeah, there was a lot of testimony today, Amanda, but what I want to talk about right now is this powerful testimony that came from a gang expert. So there's some students at UT in the science department who are actually getting to see the video that Rover shoots. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have the pier closed today, and it has been all day long since yesterday evening. But that is not keeping people away from this area. They have all come to look at this high surf that continues to rage in the ocean right now. And of course, the damage that it caused to the pier last night. One woman was swept off her feet this morning from the high tide. High surf and high tide meant one thing for photographer Jim Grant. Grab his camera and go. He was on the scene this morning when the water rushed in, washing one woman off her feet. This big set started to come in, and so I started to backpedal because I saw this water was coming up over the wall. Everyone started to run. Everybody started to run. I'm running across the street. She's running across the street. She gets about halfway across the street. She just gets taken out by the water, just took her, knocked her feet right out from underneath her. He was able to capture a couple pictures, then help the woman. When she finally regained her footing, Grant noticed she was injured. I said, yeah, just so you know, you got a cut on your forehead, you're bleeding also. So she had a cut right under her hairline. She told him a piece of wood that had washed up from the pier hit her in the head. Several hundred feet of wood ripped off the pier, leaving some pieces dangling off the side. Many people were gathering up pieces of wood as souvenirs. As for the woman who was injured, she walked away from the incident. So she just kind of got up and then just kind of shook herself off a little bit. She had one of her shoes got knocked off. She was carrying one of her shoes and she just said, I'm going home. Yeah, dramatic morning for her to say the least. As for the pier, they're not sure when it's going to reopen. The city was assessing the damage earlier today. Lifeguard said a couple other people were injured, but nothing serious. They warned that if you are in the area tomorrow, be careful and don't get in the water. And coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to tell you what lifeguards are doing to make sure that you are safe if this happens again tomorrow. Reporting live from Ocean Beach, Lauren Davis, 10 News. It was on this roadway where she says her daughter was trapped inside her vehicle and Sergeant Wilson saved her. She says this Thanksgiving and everyone after she will say a prayer for Sergeant Wilson and his family because he saved her daughter's life. I think he literally saved her life. It's still hard to believe no one died in the five car pileup in September on the 163. That's only because of this man. He stopped on his motorcycle, busted out the window of a car on fire and pulled the 48 year old driver Lucilla Ramirez to safety. Then he went back to another car and pried open the jammed door, cut her airbags and carried Alexandria Garcia to safety. I said she was flailing and she was panicked and I think by being there, saving her, taking her out of the car, made her feel safe. I interviewed Sergeant Wilson after that crash, and he told me he was just doing what he was trained to do. Doing my job as a Marine. You know, we're here to serve the people. Then, a week later, he was on his way to work when he came upon another crash involving a motorcycle, and he administered CPR, but unfortunately, he didn't make it. Then Friday, Sergeant Wilson was on his motorcycle on the 15 North, when he was hit by a car, slid under a tractor trailer, and was killed. 
The news hit Garcia hard. And it's just really sad because I didn't even get a chance to say thank you. The woman he saved from the car on fire didn't want to go on camera and never had the chance to thank Sergeant Wilson, but said this today. I'm really grateful for what he did. He's an incredible soul. He's obviously a hero. It's unfortunate the world lost him. The Marines issued this statement saying this is truly the loss of a fine Marine and he will be missed greatly. Now, Sergeant Wilson was originally from Connecticut, but stationed here. He joined the Marines in 2010, and during that time, he won several awards. Very sad story here. Live in Kearney Mesa, Lauren Davis, 10 News. Friends describe Emma Walker as the sweetest girl they knew, an outgoing, smiling cheerleader whose life was cut too short. Officials arrested Riley Gall, saying he fired a gun into her bedroom while she was sleeping and killed her. Neighbors are relieved they caught the suspect. Well, I was glad that they caught the person, um, you know, because you never know. It could have been somebody random. I was glad that they called him. It really doesn't think, make things any better for the family. Zanucci recalled the scene the next morning after Walker was found dead by her mom. There were uh, six cop cars parked in front of the house, including the forensic services truck. And uh, when I was leaving for work, they were carrying evidence bags in and out of the house. Gall was a football player at Maryville College and had played football at Central High School. <laughs> Maryville College put out this statement to the students saying they were cooperating with the investigation. According to friends, Gall had dated Emma for two years and they'd recently broken up. Wednesday at her house, someone posted flowers by the mailbox. It's a sad day in the neighborhood. I feel really sorry for uh, for Mark and Jill and Evan, and I hope they can somehow get through this. In Knoxville, Lauren Davis, Local 8 News. <laughs> this isn't the way Jamacio Kimball had planned on proposing to his girlfriend, but it's the way it happened. Jamacio, or Jam as they call him, was on the way to propose last Wednesday at church when his car hydroplaned, slid down an embankment, hit this power pole, snapping it in two. It was nothing but God that saved me. Trapped inside, Jam remembered his baseball bat in his back floorboard. Normally used for helping his team on the field, this day it saved his life. I was like, okay, my car can blow up at any time. So he got out and while he was in the hospital, stumbled down to one knee and asked his girlfriend of one year to be his wife. Looking at that car, I could have lost my life on the way to ask the love of my life to marry me. While I still have breath and while God still allows me, I want to, I want to, I want to go ahead and do it. He gets up out of his wheelchair and of course I'm like, sit back down, what are you doing? You know, you, you just got in a car wreck. You don't have to get up. Then I caught on to what was going on when he started to explain everything and I was like, how blessed, how blessed am I to just sit here and hear him speak these words. She said yes, and they hugged each other for several minutes. Jam's baseball coach, friends, and family were all there, and everyone was crying. She started crying, and I started crying. In all, all honesty, I just want to, like, grab him and hold him tight, but I was kind of being very gentle with everything because I knew that he was in a lot of pain, and I didn't want to cause any more pain. He has determination tattooed on his arm and is now more than ever sure of this determination and knows he is here for a reason and has other plans to fulfill. It was a really scary night, but I mean, the best came out of it. <laughs> he may have wrecked, but the proposal was perfect. In Madisonville, Lauren Davis, Local 8 News.